Don't trust this one. She's shifty eyes. <laughs> Something wrong with her. She's got to kick my mule. I was making sure the microphone was on, like, okay? <laughs> I really was. <laughs>the house of Valentina. I'm Valentina and my husband Jack and I, we took a little coffee break and we've been sitting here chatting and I got so excited because we just finished filming the last video which was this one thing that's going to change everything for your home design and then we were like so wired from that one that yeah. we were like we cannot leave these people hanging. We need to do the next video. So my coffee is sitting over there because I cannot be trusted to talk and hold coffee at the same time. No, and I think you've had enough. Like, <laughs> calm down. So, <laughs> what is today's video? Today's video is the nine biggest mistakes you are making with your home decor and the easy fixes you can make that will completely change it around. And this is 100% a follow-up to the last video, which was all about the this one thing that you need to do in order to get your rooms looking chef's kiss amazing. So we run a design business out of the Atlanta area and we eat, sleep and breathe this all day long. And so we hope that by sharing yeah. these tips and tricks with you, that you're gonna be able to create a design in your own space that you will literally, it just get, it's gonna feel so designer, it's gonna feel pulled together, it's gonna feel thoughtful, because that's what we do, and right? it's gonna feel like home. Yeah, that's, that's the what most we're all important after. part, absolutely. So that's what we're gonna share with you today. We hope you'll hit subscribe, stick around, Give it a thumbs up. hang out, go check out our playlist if you're wanting more, because you know, we hope that you'll love it so much and want more of us, and <laughs> uh, yeah, let's jump in, shall we? Okay. Number one thing that you have to do is that you need, well, first of all, the mistake. You got the, the mistake is, is that generally people don't come up with a plan. Okay. So that's the overall issue is that, that people don't come big, up with a plan. That was our big video the, that we just finished recording. And we that, talked about why you needed a plan. Now yeah. we're going to tell you how to do that. Okay. So the number one mistake that people do when they're designing their own spaces is that they don't come up with a color palette. And when you're designing a space, it's what we get paid to do is that we come up with a color palette. We think through, we, well, a lot of times we go and look at the client's clothes. Yeah. We like to talk about where they like to shop, where they like to go on vacation. We ask all kinds of probing, irritating questions to find <laughs> out more about who these people are. It is so funny. People are always like, why are you asking me this? Just yeah. let's get to the color. And Just I'm like, pick something. We have to ask this. <laughs> yeah. That's why this works. We have to yeah. know. Do you love the beach? Do you love the mountains? Do you want to go to the desert? Like, where is your favorite thing? All of that influences this. Absolutely. And a lot of times people are like, well, I don't like black, so I guess I can't hide or, you know, Valentina, I'm like, but this is, we only have one house. We created a color palette for this house. Yeah. We're getting ready to do another one very soon. And that one is going to have a very different color palette. You have to choose a color palette for your home. And it is a, a general guideline that guides every single choice that you make after that. Yeah. We choose the exterior color. We chose the in interior colors. We choose the kinds of fabrics that you might choose. You don't even have to come up with the specifics. You just need to have the palette. That way you know what you're working towards. Number two is to use a mix of materials. You got to mix your materials. I, I love linen and I love cotton, right? But I don't do everything in my house in that one. You love leather. Can you imagine if our entire house was leather? I I have literally leather sofa, leather pants. That was like one of my biggest cover. struggles was not choosing le black leather for like no, joke. I'm listening. <laughs> black leather for everything. I really struggle with that because if you only go towards what you're immediately drawn to, you're going to probably naturally go to the same material over and over. Yeah. Like right now I've been buying boucle like oh my gosh. Like I wrote about it on Instagram and there weren't very many likes on the photo. And I was like, I don't think other people share my obsession <laughs> with like Sherpa and Boucle. Oh, I'm like it. obsessed with it. 
but I don't buy it in everything. Like you have like the boucle jacket and then maybe something that's like, you know, a different material under it. Like it Not would- Not an entire outfit You would look boucle. insane with like that boucle or like Sherpa kind of look and It's yeah. the contrast. Contrast is what your eye loves. We did photography, we've done yeah. it for years. Contrast is what your eye goes to. It's what yeah. like plays off each other. It's why you and I work so well together because it's beauty and the beast, right? It's that contrast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That was definitely the contrast I would have gone with. <laughs> we need to do like a whole series on this one thing and I'm just gonna like brush over it for a second. Well, I think point one and point two are what helps you do number three. <laughs> that sounded weird. That sounds weird. <laughs> but you need to build a capsule home, especially if you're building your home over time. Yes. This is a conversation that we have with our clients all the time. We never design for a specific budget. We design the space. Yeah. And then we tell them, okay, we'd rather design the entire space and you build it over time because then you know what these main pieces are. And even if you don't get them all in the first day, you're building out a capsule home and you've got the main pieces that you know that you need that are going to carry the weight of your design. Then you can build in some great bases and then you can build in some great accessories and then you can add in those yeah. books and the things that you can start to add on. It's it's literally like all these girls that do these capsule wardrobes where they're like, you have to have these basic core items in your wardrobe. Then when you want to start adding the jewelry and you want to start, you know, adding these yeah. things, then it just works. So that's how we're able to build out a space. And then every season we make little tweaks to it because we gave ourselves that baseline and it's, it's a core setting and then we can kind of switch things out. The, one of the biggest mistakes that I see is that people do just do not understand that they can buy functional and beautiful things in one. It actually saves you so much money. It's better to buy something that, yeah. that functions and also is your decor. I think the kitchen and the bathroom are the two places that a lot of times this is the most useful, but not always because sometimes people will just buy the ugliest basket that's functional when they could have just bought one that was pretty and it would have done the same thing. And so then they're like, well, now I need decor. It's like, but if you just bought a, a pretty basket, yeah. then you wouldn't need another thing. So it's cheaper to focus on this idea of function and beauty, that you want them to always be working together simultaneously. That way your room comes together and you don't have to spend as much. You don't need as many things for your room. I really think that you need to mix high and low and a lot of times people only want budget friendly. And, and you can buy really nice quality things that are still budget yeah. friendly. But what I find is that a lot of times people just get to where they're like, I'm only buying cheap stuff. Well, sometimes a cheaper item costs you more over time because you have to replace it. You have to replace it, yeah. We've bought so many cheap sofas, and this is not the most expensive sofa. I mean, I look at sofas. And some of the stuff your clients buy. I it's know. Like, wow. I'm like, oh, if only I had $35,000 for a sofa. Yeah. <laughs> I could have exactly what I want to have. So, I understand we're all on budgets. We're all trying to make the most out of our money. But sometimes when you only focus on yeah. buying the very cheapest thing, you're really not, you're, you're missing out. You're actually hurting yourself in the long run. I think making about price, because we see the other side too, which is like, oh my God, you see my new Gucci <sighs> underwear? And yeah. my, like, it's like, oh my gosh. Like yeah. every single thing is designer. I just, I, I've never been like that myself. And I wasn't raised like that. And in fact, when I buy designer things, my mom's like, Ugh. What are you doing? And I'm like, but you don't understand. Like, like I have the little Chanel earrings on today and I've owned them for almost 10 years and I wore them every day for like the first five years that I own them. And they still look new. And yeah. they weren't outrageously expensive. They were still budget friendly. They're not like real gold and real diamonds. Or, you know, those would be great things to have. Yeah. But when you focus on 
not limiting yourself by budget. You'll, you're gonna find that sometimes spending a little bit more on maybe a West Elm sofa instead of one that you bought off of Amazon, sorry Amazon, we love you, but sometimes the furniture's not as nice. We've bought a lot of disposable yeah. sofas over the years where they didn't hold up, the buttons started falling off, the seams started ripping out, and we were like, the next time we buy a sofa, we're gonna spend a little bit more bought it on sale definitely into saving the yep. money but you cannot only focus on only buying cheap things you you have to think long term about mixing your high and low i realized when i did our bathroom that i created an immersive theme and i've realized and again this is all personal if any designer tells you that there's a right or wrong way to do something you just shouldn't just just walk away because the truth is is that this is all personal it's about how you feel yeah it's a intuition it's they're man-made rules when especially with this stuff it's your home right for me personally something that i realized about myself and that you anytime someone hires me from nap from that point forward once i realized it was like never again i hate rooms that feel themed so i never, never create a room where every single element feels like it all belongs. So tell me, like, walk me through that with our bathroom. Because the bathroom yeah. was the first thing we did, rewind. Yes. Six years ago, we moved in this house. We had, we just moved back. We didn't have a whole lot of money. The bathroom had carpet in the floor, which we were both like dry heaving every time we got out of yeah, the shower. Yeah, still makes me so dry heave. <laughs> carpet was ripped out. Like, and then that was the first room we renovated. So tell me what it was about that that felt themey, because I when may I not originally what that means. when I originally designed the bathroom before somebody kept saying I don't know about everything I designed, I had it I had it more mixed actually. Okay. And then what happened was I was starting to get tired, and then I just put things together that belonged. Right. So the faucets match, the vanity matches, uh, the the color matches perfectly. The tile matches per like it's it's so when I did it I was like I'm going to create a, like a cottage feel in here and every element I put into oh, that yeah. room is cottagey. Oh, like a Disney hotel. It did it kind of like that. It really did. Where it's like this is so themed. It's so themed and I hated it for so long and then I tried painting it to try to <laughs> Make it go away. Yeah. And then like I've now redone it to a point that I'm like, I I mixed in this sort of raw element that didn't belong. And it's like, oh, I'm enjoying our bathroom for the first time, I think, in probably about five years. <laughs> oh my gosh, you missed the carpet? Is that what you're saying? That definitely missed the carpet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay, next up, I think it is a mistake to only design with either all formal or all informal. And I see this more and more because right now in fashion, the biggest trend is like this sloppy, sorry, that's not nice, but the, it's, it is, it's like this sloppy, the sloppy look. There's not it's, a single fastener on clothing anymore. All oversized <laughs> If it and, can't slide on or off. And I look at it and I'm like, oh, they make this look so good. And then I buy like the sweater and I'm like, it's hanging off my hands. I'm already five foot one. I'm already self-conscious about my height. I don't need something else to remind me that I should have shopped in the kids department. So I feel like that trend has definitely come over to home decor where everyone's just like, let it all lay out, you know, and just everything is informal in the space. I think you should mix, not like overly glitzy necessarily, which you might be able to, but be like mix and match the formalness of items. The sofa itself like here is a little bit more casual and then we've got like the cashmere and we've given some little yeah, bit definitely. The more formal materials <clears throat> rather than throwing something like really sloppy down on it and something like I just feel like it's just like the the broken stocks and like Uggs are making a comeback and so are Crocs. I mean, what is happening to what our is generation? Ha happening to our world people? <laughs> Crocs are coming back? <laughs> and Uggs. <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm thinking about buying them. <laughs> you're my Uggs? I love my Uggs. Oh, I was yeah, like, man, why did this ever go out? I loved cold. them. I know, they're so warm. But yeah, I think you need to kind of mix and match. And I think that's, I always refer to outfits because it's sometimes it's easier for, for me even to think about an outfit and how that works. And then 
You know, it's like, oh, well, everything is formal and you're wearing a high heel. Maybe you need to pull, pull your hair up and have a little bit informal look, you know, a little bit more casual. And that's how you need to mix your rooms where everything isn't so perfectly formal. Maybe yeah. you just need a blanket that's gently thrown down to break that formalness of the space to make it feel more comfortable and inviting. And then if you've got lots of comfy things and it's all slippers and loungewear all day kind of feel, you might need maybe some structure in your coffee table or like a little bit more structure in the way that you set your books out and it'll kind of balance your informal and formalness. Or just put on some pants with a zipper. Or that. Try that. Back in my like day. Wearing, yeah, I'm wearing a zipper. Back in my day, I don't we have used any to have to fasten our pants. <laughs> I don't have any like that. <laughs> I think it's a mistake. I'm just going to be perfectly honest. I think it's a mistake to think that once and done. I, I, I know that we yeah. do that for our clients, but there's, it's not just the stuff that goes into a room that makes it what it is. And it's very difficult to design one room, even if I design a room. And then I go back into it. Let's say we design it in the winter and I go back in the summer. I'm going to make some adjustments for the seasons. Yeah. So I think that if you develop your home, if you use some of these other ideas that we've talked about where, you know, you're building a capsule home where you've got those basics and then you can kind of mix and match things in seasonally. And you know, you might get a pay raise at work and you're like, I'm going to go buy that cashmere blanket that I have wanted for yeah. all these years. And, this is how I'm gonna treat myself. I think that that's a really beautiful way to build out your home. It's not this once and done and the things literally if like the, on, uh, I think about Raymond, yeah. you know, when she takes the fork down. She takes the fork down and there's a outline cause it's faded. Yeah. And we actually know people like that. Uh, like I work, oh, we do a lot of real estate where people will lift a rug and the floor is a completely different color. Or they move a painting and you're like, what, what did you not paint? Literally like, things have never moved. And I I personally like to have a home that just moves a little bit more than that. Obviously, I don't expect you guys to move your stuff around as much as I do. We keep our furniture on wheels <laughs> at all times. We should. We should. But I think that some of the accessories and things, that's why I started that other month to month yeah. Uh, series because I wanted to show how I make these small adjustments in my home to make it feel seasonally appropriate. So I think building your home over time rather than thinking it's once and done will really add just you're gonna mature and you're gonna grow and you're gonna change and plus it gives you the time if budget is an issue mm -hmm. this is a great way around the budget because if you're thinking oh I've got to go drop X amount to fit no get a couch get something to sit on and then as you have the money yeah. Then you can take your time and buy the pieces you want versus like, I've got to walk in today and get it all done. I need $40,000 for the one Date the girl, one marry room. her, have a baby all in one day. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck with that. Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, a fundamental belief of mine that we need to have books in our home. Mm -hmm. I, I've always been this person. Always. I've always been an avid reader. I, my mom would put me down for a nap and I would read the encyclopedias cause that's what was in the bedroom. And we had the encyclopedias sitting there and I would read through them. Like I have always been a person that was always learning and growing and absorbing and becoming. And so to me, mm, yeah. I fundamentally, I think that it's a mistake to not buy books. I, I think it's fundamentally a mistake to not buy books often. I think you should have books in your home. I. When I go to people's homes, I'm shocked. They, where are their books? Yeah. Why don't they have books? People don't buy books. And people seem to really buck this idea of buying a book. And I'm like, I'm so confused. I don't understand this. Like, I just. You learn by reading and doing. And yeah. one of the things, and again, the only reason we're bringing this up is because you guys are asking the questions all the time mm -hmm. and you're frustrated with your own rooms or why something's not working. Books change all that. They do. And we're not talking about just like stacking them and designing with them, but actually taking in the content that's in them. Yeah. You're continually growing and evolving as a designer because you're continually reading. And it's not just design, you're reading fashion stuff, you're looking yep. at home and travel. And, and yeah, whatever your interests are. Yeah. I think it's really important. I think it's really important to convey your personal interest. I know that we live in a digital age. I know that we are living in a tech revolution and they're gonna write about us in the history. 
not books, but <laughs> on the history website. History. <laughs> It'll be on the history hard drive. Yeah. I don't know, but to me, books, they add a lot of texture to your home. They add a lot of character and they say a lot about who you are and what matters to you. Yeah. I think that buying books, like I just bought a Picasso book that I am just flipping out over and I'm looking through there and I'm like, all the things that you see like out and the way that people's minds work, you're like, Picasso was doing this how many years ago? Yeah. Like Picasso just, he saw something. And there's something that I just take away from that. And I'm like, wow, just this play of texture. Cause he didn't just paint, like he was, he sculpted and he, he had these multiple interests. Yes. And so I think having books and buy, buying books and buying books often is really important. I think that's about all the time we have for I today. Know. I've had a lot of fun and my throat is getting dry because we did two <laughs> videos in a row. After a live event. And I need my coffee. So um, in fact, you'll just hand it to me. Thank you guys so much for stopping in. And we really hope that this is just, that we just constantly feed your souls with the joy of creating home. That's what we want more than anything. Oh, I love the way you said that, the joy of creating home. It, it is a joy. It should be a joy. I love that. It's supposed to be a pleasure. We've get, been given these spaces and the life that we're living inside of them. Let's make them amazing. Let's yeah. make it beautiful and let's make it awesome. So thank you guys. Don't forget, hit subscribe give the video a thumbs up and we will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye. I'm like, oh, I have to let you go. Okay. I know. Welcome back to the house of Valentina. <laughs> that part. <laughs> <laughs>